Hey guys, I hope y'all are having a great day today and I hope y'all had a really wonderful holiday. My family had a very beautiful Christmas, definitely one to be thankful for and I hope that y'all can say the same. So for today's video, I'm so excited because I'm going to be sharing with y'all my top makeup purchases of 2021 and I'm just so excited to share with y'all all the products that I finally selected. I knew it was going to be really hard to narrow this list down to 10 products because I had to go through all the makeup that I bought this year and I bought a whole lot like I think this is probably the most that I've ever purchased in a year because I've been reviewing a lot of stuff on my channel. So I knew it was going to be hard and it definitely was, but I finally narrowed my list down to 10. So before we get started so I can show y'all what I selected, for those of you who are new here, hello and welcome and thank you so much for stopping by. On this channel, we do makeup videos that cater to the 40 and over crowd, but makeup lovers of all ages are welcome. So if you are new here, please subscribe. I would love to have you join and I would really appreciate your support. Okay, y'all, let's jump right into it. Okay, so my original idea for this video was to take the 10 products and rank them from 10th place to 1st place, and I quickly found that that was like really hard to do, which I already knew was going to be hard, but I just kind of gave up on that because I'm like, I can't. I like these products for different reasons. So instead of ranking them, I'm just going to go through the products and I'm going to go in the order that I would use them in a makeup routine, and that'll be a lot easier for me. So um, one of the things that I thought about was how much use have I gotten out of these products since the first time that I used them so that's pretty much what I went off of but I also there's a couple of things in here that I may not use it all that often but there's like certain reasons that I put them on the list so I'll share all of that with you as we go through so I've been doing my eye makeup first lately I used to always do complexion then eyes lately I've been changing that up so we're going to start off with an eyeshadow palette so the first thing that I have on my list is the ColourPop Stone Cold Fox palette. So this is what it looks like in case you haven't seen it and I think that this is a really nice palette for people who love cool tone makeup like myself. This is a very nice everyday palette and you can also use some of these darker shades up here to smoke out a look if you want more of like a, a nighttime look. And some people might think that this is like a really monochromatic look and you can't really do too much with it. So let me quickly compare it when I say monochromatic. Let me show you this other palette really quickly. This is the color Color pop it's a mood palette and as you can see you just have a whole lot of different colors in here it's a lot you can do with it right so some people might be thinking with the it's a mood palette no with the stone cold fox palette that such is not the case but this is really versatile especially again for people who really like cool tone makeup I feel like you can do a whole lot with this so going back to what I said about how much use have I been getting out of the product since I first tried it I have picked this thing up so many times I think the only two shades that I haven't used yet are these two I just don't know if I'm gonna get any use out of those two shades but I think all the rest of them I have tapped into them at least once and I find that whenever I pick this up I can always do like a separate or like a different look with it it is really versatile even though the scheme might come off as a bit monochromatic but I think for people who love cool tone makeup this is a really nice palette for both everyday and for more like glam like done up looks so I do want to show y'all what I am wearing on my eyes I did forget to tell y'all at the beginning that all but one of the products that I'm talking about today I do have it on my face for today so I'm wearing most of the shades in the this column right here so I have this shade here that's the shimmery shade that's on my lid and this shimmery shade is in my inner corner this shade here I have it on the outer part of the lid and also on the lower lash line and then I took this shade here to buff everything out so I don't have this one on but all the rest of them in that column that's what I'm wearing on my lid today and like I said every time I pick this palette up which is very often I'm always able to like do something different so for people like me who really love cool tone makeup I think this is a really nice palette to have so this is the first product on my list and my second product is actually another ColourPop eye product this is the ColourPop Act Natural Defining Mascara so y'all used to always hear me talk about this one 
them. This is the Essence Lash Princess Mascara and this is really good. It's a really good cheap mascara and then when I tried this one for the first time I kept saying to myself I really like this. I feel like I like it just as much as the Essence Mascara and then over time I just noticed that I was like not touching the Essence Mascara because I just couldn't put this one down. This one has a really nice like almost like a whipped formula so you know how some mascaras they might end up being a little too wet and then they transfer really quickly. This one has like a soft like whipped formula but it's not too wet so it kind of like grips and kind of sets onto your lashes pretty fast and if you want to go in with another coat you can do that because the first coat kind of sets down pretty pretty quickly and pretty nicely. Now the one thing I'll say about this one let me show you guys what the wand looks like. This wand I don't really use it on my lower lashes too much because it is a little thick and I do like wands like this one on the Essence Mascara that are just a little slimmer and a little more precise so I don't use that ColourPop mascara on my lower lashes usually but for my top lashes I think it's really good for like giving it just more of like a dramatic look like to me it makes my lashes just look longer um, more voluminous and just more kind of fanned out so if you haven't tried this one yet I think it's definitely worth trying it's only like nine dollars and it is my favorite mascara right now okay let's move on to a couple of foundations so let me first start off with the one that I'm not wearing today so this is the tower 28 sunny days tinted sunscreen so I'll link my video in case you haven't seen this one but whenever I'm doing a foundation wear test I try to stretch it out to eight hours at least but I'll cut off the wear test whenever I feel like it's time for the makeup to be refreshed. With this one I was so surprised because I got to eight and a half hours and I could have gone even longer than that. I just cut it because <laughs> I really wanted to like wrap up the video but this one is definitely the best wear test that I've had on any complexion product all year long. I was just blown away at how well this wore on my face and I have oily skin just so that you'll know this one just performs so beautifully on my face. I am in the shade 55 in this one just in case you can use me as a reference so let me show you a quick swatch of this. I usually keep um, a list of all of my best matching foundations in my description box so I definitely should add this one to the list because this is like a really perfect match. I try tried shade 50 and that one matches me okay but 55 is like a perfect match like it just melts it right into my skin and on top of that it just wore so well so I would highly recommend this if you're looking for a new foundation this is definitely the best one that I've tried all year so again this one is the tower 28 sunny days tinted sunscreen I'm gonna have everything linked in my description box in case you're interested in trying any of these out so now let's move on to the one that I am I'm wearing today and I'm not gonna lie I did want to wear my tower 28 today but I decided to go with the product that I'm gonna show you next just because I can't remember the last time that I wore it so my next product is the morphe uh, filter effect soft focus foundation and I wear the shade rich 25 so speaking of the shade I'm gonna swatch this for y'all too the first thing I noticed about this foundation was the shade I usually have a hard time finding complexion products that work for me so that swatch on the bottom is the Morphe foundation so I usually have a hard time finding complexion products um, particularly from the drugstore but also high-end so I have a cool pink undertone and I usually find that a lot of complexion products in my complexion range they usually run warm or um, neutral and hardly ever like a cool undertone this one definitely has a cool pink undertone which is what I need so the first thing that I noticed when I tried this was the shade match like it's a perfect match for my skin tone and that's one of the reasons that I really like it. It claims to have a medium to full coverage which I do think it does but I will say with this one you do have to put on more than I would like to get it up to a full coverage and one of the things that I look for in complexion products is ones that will build up to whatever coverage it claims to be without you having to put a whole lot on so you definitely don't have to pack a whole lot of this on but I will say compared to other foundations that I've tried you do have to put on a little bit more 
before. Um, you can build it up to full coverage, but it will just require more product but nothing like overwhelming. But it is a really nice foundation. It has a really nice finish to it. Like I said, it is the one that I'm wearing today. I do have it set with a powder that I'm going to show you guys in a minute, but on its own, it's really, really nice. It has a really nice, just natural finish to it. And it does wear pretty well. I think this wore like a good seven hours on me, which is normal for me. But like I said, one of the reasons I love this foundation is the shade. So again, I am in the shade Rich 25 in this one. So I did just want to quickly point out with this foundation. So they were running a promotion when it first came out. If you bought the foundation, you got a free foundation brush. This is the Morphe E63. So I'm not including this as a standalone product in my top 10 because I didn't spend money on this. This was free along with the foundation. However, this is my favorite foundation brush ever. I love this thing. I love using it with all of my foundations. It blends your foundation out so well. I like how it can fit like right in between your brows and you can get like up in the corners. It's a really nice, the shape of it is just a really, really nice brush. So I doubt that they're still running that promotion, but just in case you're interested in the brush, give it a try. I think this costs $18, but again, it's the Morphe E63 brush. So next up, let's talk about a concealer. So this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Magic Touch Concealer. So I am in the shade 15 in this one. And just like with foundations, I'm going to show you guys a swatch of this. Just like with foundations, I need a concealer that also runs pink, but it has to be like a shade or two lighter than my skin tone to give me some coverage and give me some brightness. This is a really nice shade for me. Again, shade 15. So that's one of the main reasons I like this concealer, but I think my favorite part about using this is how it blends out. It claims to be a medium coverage concealer, or it might even be medium to full, because I feel like this one gives you really good coverage, but um, it blends out so beautifully. Like it, it just, I can't even, it just blends out like so effortlessly without losing any of the pigment or losing any of the coverage. I will say, when I tested this out I did notice very minor creasing like someone really wouldn't notice it like with the naked eye but I noticed it because I was like really testing the product out and like looking at it like up close but I think since I bought this I can only think of two times where I was wearing makeup and I didn't wear this concealer it was one video where I was testing out another concealer another video where I was doing a shop my stash and I tried out a new concealer and I feel like every other time that I've worn makeup up outside of those two videos I've been wearing this concealer despite the creasing because like I said it's very minimal you really wouldn't be able to tell the color of it is really nice for me and it just blends out really well I kept saying that I wasn't going to repurchase this when I ran out because as much as I like this I don't think it's quite as good as my two staple concealers which is Too Faced Born This Way and Estee Lauder Double Wear I don't think it's like quite as good as those but I do think I am going to repurchase this because I do really like the shade of it like I do think the shade of this is a little bit better than my other two concealers maybe the same as my Estee Lauder one but I do think I'm going to repurchase this because it is a really nice one so that's the next product on my list and now let's move on to a setting powder so like I said earlier when I was talking about the foundation I do oh I do have this concealer on too I do have a color corrector on underneath it but I am wearing this concealer today and I'm also wearing this next powder so this is the next can't stop won't stop mattifying powder and this one is in the shade tan so I bought this in two shades tan and caramel caramel is just a little bit darker I don't know where that is but this is the one that I wear most of the time to set um, my foundation I wear a different powder to set my under eye concealer so I would say for most of 2021 and definitely all of 2020 I noticed that I have kind of switched over to more of like natural and hydrate finishes whereas before I was very much into matte finishes and then when I tried this one this one this powder definitely is a mattifying powder so I don't think it's necessary to put this on top of a matte finish foundation but if you put it on top of a natural or hydrating or like even like a dewy finish foundation this one will definitely mattify the face but it's a really nice like soft like natural matte finish so my foundation 
foundation today, the Morphe foundation. That one has a natural finish and I do have this powder on top of it. This one, you really don't need a whole lot to set your foundation and to give you like a nice matte finish. It wears really nicely and it takes a long time, at least on my skin, to start getting oily. I can't remember um, exactly how long I tested this out for, but I want to say it was around an eight hour period and it wore really nicely on me. And I have been picking this up a lot. Now I won't say that I've been wearing this like crazy only because when I'm testing out a new foundation I do like to wear um, two other setting powders specifically to test out foundations with but when I'm wearing a foundation that I'm already very familiar with and especially one where I want more of like a softer matte finish this is definitely the one that I go for. I did try a darker shade in this as a matte bronzer and I didn't really care for that <laughs> but definitely for like a setting powder you should definitely try this if you like matte finishes. So this next product I was a little torn about putting it on the list. This one is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Primrose Palette. Now I'm torn because it is a really pretty palette but the only reason I'm putting it on the list is because of this blush color. Like I need to find a standalone blush that is this shade because this blush color just looks so pretty on me. Let me do a quick swatch of this blush. It's a really nice like burnt orangey type of shade although I have a cool undertone I always go for warmer tone blushes because I like for my blushes to kind of offset everything else that's going on in my face so this is a really oh I forgot I have it on my <laughs> I have it on my cheeks. Anyway, this is what the blush looks like on my cheeks. And I like for my blushes to be warmer to offset because I'm usually wearing cooler tone um, eyeshadow and lipstick. So that's what it looks like on me. The rest of the palette, like I said, is really pretty. And I have used, I think I've used all but this shade in the palette. And it is a really pretty palette, but every time I pick this up, it's primarily for this blush color. I don't think I've used this color either on my eyes or at least it doesn't look like I tapped into it with a brush but I think every other shade in here I've used it at least once and I know I haven't used this. If I do ever use it it's probably going to be maybe for like a matte eyeshadow but like I said every time I pick this up and I can't stop picking it up it's because of this blush color here. So like I said I was kind of torn about putting the whole palette on my list just for that one product but like I said one of the things that I thought about was how much use have I been getting out of the product and I won't be surprised if I hit pan on this because I use it pretty much every time I do my makeup. So that's my next product and we are down to our last three products. So the next one is a bronzer so I'm pretty sure y'all know what bronzer I'm talking about but just in case you don't this is the Say Beauty Sun Melt Bronzer. This one is in the shade Deep Bronze and again another product that I am wearing today. So when I first saw this I thought that it was going to be too deep on me and I was like no like I'm not I'm not going to be able to wear this but this bronzer does an excellent job of just melting right into your skin. You can pack this on like layer after layer and it'll just melt right in and it won't look like there's too much bronzer. It only comes in four shades so I think that these shades are pretty versatile. However I do think they could still manage to put in maybe like a couple more shades in their range but for this one just take a look at you know this up against my skin tone and you would probably think it's too dark for me but it's not like like I said you can just keep putting this on and it'll just like melt right into the skin so probably all of their shades are quite versatile like this but I can definitely speak for this one shade deep bronze that it is like a very versatile shade just based on how it performs on my skin. This is another product that I just can't put down like every single time I do my makeup unless I'm doing something like I can recall doing some videos that were like all drugstore or something like that. I'm just always picking up this bronzer and prior to I can't remember if it was this year or last year when a lot of people started coming out with cream uh, cheek products. Prior to that I used to always like kind of stay away from those types of products because I was just always so used to powder bronzers, powder blushes. This one with it being a cream like this one has really like given me an appreciation for cream products because this one is just really really nice. 
So my last two products are lip products. So the one that I'm not wearing today is the NYX Butter Gloss. So they came out with, I think, eight different shades. And my two favorites are Spike Toffee and Brownie Drip. I can't find Brownie Drip. I have a feeling I left it at work. But um, what I like about these glosses, even before they came out with the eight new shades, the formula of these glosses are so nice. They really feel like a whipped butter, really nice and soft soft on your lips. These um, new shades that they came out with, they're deeper for like deeper skin tones, like deeper nude glosses. I was going to show you guys the deepest shade that they came out with. I think it's called Lava. I don't see it. I don't know what happened to it, but all of their shades, the, the eight new ones that they came out with, they're just much deeper shades for deeper skin tones. But this one here, Spike Toffee, is definitely one of my favorites. Let me see if I can build that up just a little bit. These glosses, aren't meant to give you like high pigmented color on your lips that's the shade spike toffee the other shade brownie drip is much more of like a reddish brown color and both of these shades just give me like a hint of something on my lips but what i really like about these is the formula these are only like maybe seven dollars or so so definitely worth trying out if you've never tried them now with the new shades i think they have like 35 shades in these so you can definitely find something that you like in the first batch of colors my favorite was this one this is praline so let me show y'all this one too this one is more of like a almost like a pinky shade so this one is the shade praline this one used to be my favorite until i came across um brownie drip and a uh, spike toffee okay last product on my top 10 of 2021 is the lipstick that i'm wearing this is the fashion fair iconic lipstick in the shade pure plum so let me show y'all what this looks like in the tube i just feel like on my lips it looks a little bit lighter than it does in the tube so it's not necessarily the color that i'm putting on the list it's fashion fair lipstick in general i do have this in another shade this is called ganache and ganache is more of like a um like a chocolatey brown shade so i did say earlier that one of the things i took into account when i was um, putting stuff on my top 10 list is how much use am i getting out of the product since i initially tried it now i will say out of everything that i talked about today this is my least used product so i didn't put it on the list just because it's a good lipstick because it is it's a really nice satin creamy lipstick but i also put it on the list for nostalgic purposes and even though I don't use these lipsticks all that often, I just feel like I can't finish out this list without something from Fashion Fair because it's nostalgic to me. Like a lot of us have memories attached to this brand. So if you didn't see my video on the Fashion Fair lipstick and one of their foundations, I will link that in the description box below. So yeah, that's why I put this on the list because it's Fashion Fair, you know? So a lot of y'all I think feel the same way based on a lot of stuff that y'all said in the comments on that video so those are my top 10 makeup purchases of 2021 let me know what you think about my list do you have any of these products or did I talk about anything that I love that just didn't work out for you let me know in the comments so I really hope that y'all enjoyed the video today if you did please let me know by giving me a thumbs up make sure you're subscribed to the channel before you head out and I will see y'all back here for my next one until then take care have a good one y'all bye